We now have the data from 2024 and it, it shows one thing that the media are not really talking about and that is that Australia is on track to hit at least 80% renewable power capacity in 2030, which is only five years from now. It's very likely that Australia will be 100% carbon free in its electricity grid before 2035. Now, I made this prediction that this would happen in, I don't know, when I started the channel nearly four years ago, people said, I remember people said, yeah, we, that's great. You're an optimist. You're an optimist. You've been, you've been very optimistic here. But actually, if you look at these numbers, it shows a remarkable story. And it shows that the coalition's plan or the Liberal Party's plan in Australia for a grid dominated by nuclear is well completely unneeded, unnecessary, and just utterly pointless. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Here are the numbers from renewaleconomy.com.au. They show you that actually Australia is setting records for renewables, and it's on track to easily hit 82% renewable energy generation capacity. 82% of the grid will be renewables by 2030. The latest quarterly investment report from the Clean Energy Council, which tallies the total number and capacity of renewable projects in Australia financially committed in the last three months of 2024 is out. Now, this does not include record amounts of household rooftop solar, which were installed in 2024. In 2024, the average size of household solar systems installed was about 10.5 kilowatt. That's literally double what they were around five years ago. Now, all that aside, that's amazing. We've hit 4 million, 4 million households now in Australia have solar panels on their roofs. So, I mean, those 4 million households would really benefit from having an electric car. Those numbers, though, are not included in this data. According to the report, the quarter saw a total of seven renewable energy generation projects, as in Q4 of 2024, totaling 1,590 megawatts reach financial close. And that shows you that... Um, this is actually the second quarter in a row where financially committed new generation projects surpassed one gigawatt, and the first time this has happened in consecutive quarters since 2021. So which projects are making the big difference? Well, one of them was Light Source BP's 585 megawatt Goulburn River solar farm, which joined the financially committed category after winning approval. For the year, the total amount of new renewable energy generation capacity committed reached 4,346 megawatts worth more than $9 billion in capital value. They were the best annual investment figure since 2018, but that doesn't tell us the full picture. When it comes to actual technology, onshore wind got a total of 2,218 megawatts reached financial commitment, which was amazing considering only, well, zero megawatts were committed in 2023. Onshore wind, zero but this year, or 2024, it was 2,218, which is actually more than the solar farms that were committed to. Solar farms were a total of 1,918 megawatts. Now, that's compared to 1,314 the previous year. So you can see here, solar had a great year in 2023, 1,314 megawatts. But in 2024, it was even better at 1,918. Here's the thing, though. We actually have an enormous amount of committed solar farms and wind farms over the next five years. We're talking about billions and billions and billions of dollars, but we do not have the ability to actually back up all that energy. So we're wasting it. We're wasting, not all of it, but we're wasting a very large percentage of it. It's being curtailed. And it's meaning that, you know, fossil fuel power plants are still staying on. But that is about to change. Large-scale battery storage for the quarter saw 870 megawatts slash 1,936 megawatt hours, says renewaleconomy.com.au, worth of projects reach financial commitment. But for all of the year, for all of 2024, 4,029 megawatts slash 11,350 megawatt hours of new projects were committed to. As you can see, it won't be that long before we can actually start saving all this electricity where we're sending it to the grid. So you probably feel like you're solar at the moment. Uh, it's being wasted, you know, getting enough money for it, right? Because 
you know, there's, there's just too much solar electricity going into the grid during the middle of the day, but that's going to change. When we have all these big batteries soaking up all that extra power during the day, we'll be able to get rid of a lot of these fossil fuel power plants. Some of the bigger contributors to the storage, the battery storage pipeline include Origin Energy's Araring storage system that's being built um, within 100 kilometers of my house. That's the stage two battery. It'll add 240 megawatts and four hours of storage capacity to the New South Wales grid. But when they're finished building that battery, by the way, it's going to be built on the site. It's basically built right next door to Australia's largest coal power plant, which is going to be shut down within the next one or two years. That'll be one of the four biggest batteries in the world. One of the four biggest batteries in the world. So they're essentially replacing an, an enormous coal power plant with one of the biggest batteries in the world. And what it's going to mean is that battery is going to soak up all this electricity we're wasting. So we're almost getting free electricity to some degree. EQ Energy's Williamsdale battery energy storage system in the ACT is in the mix too. That added 250 megawatts. And that's a two-hour energy storage system. All of these new megawatts, says Renew Economy, megawatt hours, gigawatts, and billions of dollars bode very well for the renewable energy industry and for Australia's journey to 82% renewables by 2030. As long as the coalition isn't elected and these projects are cancelled, which some of them will be, as long as the Liberal Party doesn't get into power, then Basically, all these projects will go ahead, plus more that will be announced over the next 12 months. I'm sure they'll have probably even more than this. And Australia's unquestionably on, on track to completely annihilate fossil fuels in this country within the next 10 years. A total, in fact, of 223 generation and storage projects have been commissioned around the country since 2017. Representing 17 gigawatts of installed electricity generation capacity, 2.1 gigawatts slash 3.7 gigawatt hours of battery storage, and at least $53.5 billion of capital investment. Sounds like a lot of money, doesn't it? $53.5 billion. But if you think about it, that's about the cost of the Hinkley power plant in the UK. One nuclear power plant, you can get one of those, or you can get hundreds and hundreds of renewable energy projects, which represent a hell of a lot more power and a hell of a lot less, well, lower prices. Ultimately, what this will result in is lower electricity prices here in Australia. They will come down significantly. In the broader current pipeline, according to data, there is 88 renewable electricity generation projects which have either reached financial commitment or are currently under construction, representing a 13.2 gigawatt hours of total capacity. In addition to that, there is 52 committed battery storage projects currently in development, equaling 10.5 gigawatts slash 26.3 gigawatt hours in capacity in, in total put together. The pipeline of projects represents $36.5 billion worth of capital investment. However, it is apparently the two quarterly results for 2024, the final six months of 2024, that have set the pace required for Australia to maintain its transition to renewables by 2030, as the nation's fleet of aging, unreliable, and expensive coal power plants are shut down. Now, a lot of people are stressed. They're thinking to themselves, well, this great investment, but surely we can't expect this investment to continue over the next five years. But here's the thing to keep in mind. A lot of these projects are making insane amounts of money. Battery projects in Australia are incredibly financially viable. The companies that own them are literally just raking in money, charging ridiculous amounts. It's, it's crazy what they're doing, but they are extremely profitable. And if you consider the fact that they're making huge profits, but the cost to build these batteries continues to fall literally every few months, the price of batteries, battery storage is just going down, 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 down. The price of solar is just going down, down, down. Um, what that means is these companies are just going to install more and more batteries because it simply makes too much financial sense for them, especially knowing that these coal power plants will be turned off and there'll be all this, all this need for those batteries. And they'll also know that we have all this excess renewables that we're getting rid of and that they can just take advantage of, buy all those renewables really cheaply, you know, suck them up into their batteries and then charge you peak dollars between 6 to 10 p.m. So... Eventually, what that'll mean, though, is that power prices will come down and ultimately we'll have a lot less pollution here in Australia. My suggestion to you is 
if you can get solar panels. I've saved so much money having a solar system on my roof. My last bill, I was plus one hundred dollars. So they the the power company owed me one hundred dollars, and that's in spite of the fact that I charged my electric car using my solar all the time, all the time, and I still is in credit by one hundred dollars. The company that I have that I've used here in Australia are called Resync Solar. I'll put a link in the description to them, but I recommend giving them a call. You can mention me, and they'll. Well, there's a very good chance that they'll give you a discount. They've done a great job with my solar system. And for the size of my system, I'm just putting out so much power. It's absolutely incredible. So I highly recommend getting in contact with them. Let me know your thoughts, guys, in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you think nuclear is actually necessary in spite of all these facts I've presented to you? Let me know how you feel about it all.